was great. Playing a round of golf at Blue Ridge Shadows in Front Royal, Virginia has become far more than friendly competition for Tom Ertz and Joe McGuire. He, he's a very determined person and a very determined golfer. It's great that he is still out there doing this uh, where we can play together. I said I play golf with my buddy here, and uh, she still beats me, but today I might beat him. These old college pals have been playing each other for nearly 50 years. Their favorite moment captured in this 1983 picture at the famed Royal St. George's Golf Club in England. This is, part, this is part five. Now, in their late 60s, they play with a renewed enthusiasm. Shot. Thanks to a lifelong friendship strengthened even more in recent years. Oh, yeah, thin, thin. Good putt, Tommy. In 2008, Tom, a longtime public relations expert in the healthcare field, got the diagnosis he suspected. And I knew I, knew I had something wrong with me, so I figured it was probably par par Parkinson's. This progressive disease with no known cure began overwhelming Tom. I had trouble breathing sometimes. I just get short of breath. And I couldn't eat any deep breath, so my diaphragm wasn't working very well, I think. And also, um, I was exhausted. I was tired. I was going to bed early, early and earlier every night. I was stiff. I couldn't move. He feared his days of playing golf were over. In 2012, he underwent deep brain stimulation surgery. He says the results were stunning. It, was, it saved my life. It was, it was great. It's great. It feels good. While Tom feels considerably better, there is much he cannot control. <clears throat> he falls. <laughs> a lot. Oh, man. I fell down about 5,000 times the last three years. It's, uh, that many? Yeah. Oh, man. Tom has developed prevention techniques. Yeah. He often carries multiple clubs for better balance. He'll shuffle, stutter step, take longer strides, higher strides, whatever it takes to stay upright whatever it takes to keep playing. You only get one life, and it's the only life I got. And I had fun doing that, so I'm gonna do it until I can't do it anymore. So I'm gonna keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. And it's Joe's job to follow Tom closely with the cart to ensure that he does as little walking as possible. The falling down part is very alarming at the beginning, uh, but the first time he did it, he said, don't worry about me, I, I can get up bounce back up, so by the end of the match, it's like, you know, not even paying attention to him doing that. It's fun playing with jokes. He's uh, he a good sense of humor. Yeah. yeah he... You're out driving me and you have Parkinson's <laughs> disease. <laughs> got to have a sense of humor. Yeah. To be clear, oh, Tom wanted us here so the world could witness not a person with a disease playing golf. I said, I said yeah, I got to be him now. But, tied me up with but a person determined to thrive in a world that is often <laughs> arbitrary <laughs> and unfair. And it all. You know, you try to be there if you can, but he, he, you know, if you ever try to pick him up, he's strong as an ox. So it's, uh, he, he does, he'll get up on his own. Maybe that's why Tom feels so at home here. Yes, all right. Burr, 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 burr. Yes, all right. With his lifelong pal Joe by his side. You getting tired? You got some meds to do or something to eat or? Want that candy bar in there? Right now. Come on, man. Yeah. Gotta hold together here. Yeah, yeah. Virtually, you're playing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Must be all the fame and fortune. Fortunate indeed to realize that the place that makes you feel most alive exists within the richness of friendship, spanning oceans and generations, nestled now in fields of green, where it's okay to fall, knowing someone will be there to pick you up. In Front Royal, Virginia, I'm Jay Corr for ABC 7 News. This is awesome. I've never seen so many yellow cars. <laughs> they began arriving before dawn in Alexandria, Virginia. And I saw this on Facebook and I said I had to support it. So many drivers. We drove five and a half hours. From so many different places. I'm Lynn Lowe from West Virginia, Kearneysville. All here in the same colored vehicle. I see a sea of yellow, everything. All here for the same reason. We don't know Whitaker, but we're here to support and um, uplift this four-year-old and ha help him have a happy birthday. Why strangers and neighbors, some donned in Transformer costumes, 
would gather en masse to wish a kid most of them don't even know means everything to Whitaker Weinberger's family. This is very overwhelming um, to see all the, the support in these yellow cards. This is Mara Smart, the, Whitaker's aunt. She just flew in from Chicago. Viral. I mean, the kid's been through hell. Every birthday his entire life has been hard to celebrate while fighting stage four neuroblastoma. After Whitaker beat back cancer, his parents decided to throw their bumblebee-obsessed son a fourth birthday like none other. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Their simple social media request for friends to line Wit's one-mile walk to school with yellow cars went viral. Whitaker, what do you think about this? It's, it's bumblebee everywhere! You see, Whit thinks all yellow vehicles transform into bumblebee. And Whitaker said he wanted 100 bumblebees, right? That's all he talks about. Wish granted, and then some. Oh my gosh. Bumblebee! Look. It was hard to count while racing around a crush of TV crews and hundreds of well-wishers. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Bumblebee! 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 But we estimate some 200 vehicles of all shapes and sizes guided Wit on his way to school. I'm completely overwhelmed. Thank you, everyone! I'm so thankful this is all community coming together, and it's amazing. It's my birthday! How old are you? How old are you? How old are you, buddy? And what does every bumblebee-loving birthday boy want? I want to keep them all! You want to keep them all? Thank you. For just a moment, the world opened its heart and gave all it had all its time, all its bumblebees, to a little boy who has endured enough pain in his four years. Thank you, everybody. To last a lifetime. It's amazing, I can't believe how great this is. I can't believe how many people showed up. Such an insanely great community that we live in. I'm Jay Korf for ABC7 News. The hospital is a place of competing emotions in constant flux, anxiety and hope, loss and renewal. Children's National Health System in Washington has learned that children do much better in surgery when their environment makes them feel less like a patient and more like a kid. They say we roll it, they hate it, <laughs> they told it. <laughs> Which is exactly what 11-year-old Ashley Thornton of Virginia 15-year-old Alyssa Brown of Washington, D.C., and 8-year-old Mary Palmer of West Virginia have been doing for weeks. <laughs> I've been, like, telling them on the third and fourth day, it, it'll get easier. In a rare trifecta, all three have a severe form of scoliosis requiring traction 23 hours a day for weeks to prepare for the same spinal fusion surgery, allowing them to walk, breathe, and eat better. Usually for scoliosis, it would be like a left curve, but no, I'm right, I'm special, I have a right curve. So, and Dr. Mark calls me a question mark. <laughs> Good girl. Okay. Getting around can be tricky. Treatment, at times, can be painful. But they conquered their fears by being the best of friends. I cannot imagine going through this without them. I'd be bored, I'd be sad. I think they're fun to play with because they're always nice to me. I'll be coming to the rooms, make sure they're okay. And I like, uh, yeah, and they do the same back. And we just have fun and we laugh together. When you have three kids, they can play together, they can feed off each other, and really it's about the support. They're going to be here for a few weeks. They're going to be getting treatment. And to have three kids together supporting each other is, is what makes it sort of special. And they're cool and we close. So it's like, we're attraction sisters. You, you can say that. We're like this. Like, we, like, we totally get it, Alyssa. We, yeah, I can't say that one. Just, we just close. If you've ever had someone there for you during the smiles and the tears, you understand the power and the importance of the Traction Sisters, who, by the way, wear awesome matching unicorn necklaces because that's how they roll. The other day in our wheelchairs, we were playing hide and seek. Mary, go! You wanted to. 
Who'd blame the Traction Sisters for trying to evade my questions and camera? Go! <laughs> we couldn't ditch him. Darn it! But rest assured, the bonds they created and have since nurtured while cruising down corridors of uncertainty will only strengthen in time. This friendship is far from over. Uh, definitely. We already planned a sleepover. Yeah, for the parents to meet up too. First, they have to get past their respective surgeries. Alyssa went first, then Ashley, and finally Mary. All are recovering. After all these girls have been through, you get the sense that the Traction Sisters will one day just call themselves sisters. Jay Corvin, ABC 7 News.